All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to course on control of nonlinear dynamical systems. Um, we are in um, the second day of our lectures. All right. So uh, last time we mostly we introduced the course and then we moved on to see a few examples. Okay, of nonlinear systems uh, from I would hope from a relatively wide uh, range of areas. All right. Um, um, you know, you had these disease spread models, you had tractor trailer models, so aeromechanical systems, biological systems, atmospheric models, and so on. We also saw some of the cases which are not very amenable for, for what we are going to do in this course, okay. Uh, and um, this has got to do with existence and uniqueness of solutions, right. So, we saw uh, some examples of when uh, you may have non existence of solutions and non uniqueness of solutions all right and we sort of uh, you know got a feel for how uh, this can sort of create problems for us in terms of the analysis now at the end of it we sort of made a blanket assumption all right that we are not going to uh, consider these uh, funny and extreme cases so we are simply going to assume a pretty nice uh, smoothness like assumption yeah, which is called the global Lipschitz condition, okay, which essentially uh, looks something like this, right. I mean, this is what the global Lipschitz condition says that the function, of course, is uh, separately you require that the function be piecewise continuous in time, right. And on top of it, you require something like a global Lipschitz condition. This is something like a differentiability, but more than that, yeah, a little bit more than differentiability. Um, and so, this is more or less enough for solutions to exist and be unique for all times which is greater than initial. alright. So, this is the assumption, uh, blanket assumption we make going forward, okay, alright. So, today we start with some basic preliminaries, okay, for, uh, so you can see that I am using some of my own adaptive control nodes. So, this, this material is common between the two. So, uh, we are simply uh, going to look at uh, some preliminary material. First, we talk about a few myths and temptations, then we talk about more, uh, you know, more basic things like norms, yeah. Uh, a lot of you might already have exposure to norms and so on, uh, but we are going to still repeat it, yeah. Just to establish the notation we are going to use, yeah. Most importantly, this will basically set up the notation that we are going to use in this course. So, uh, later on it should not feel very alien to you, okay, alright, great. So, the first uh, sort of thing that we look at is uh, a few myths that a lot of us carry when we do asymptotic analysis, okay, when we do any kind of analysis for that matter, alright. So, what are these myths and temptations? Um, Let us look at this. First of all, if I tell you that there is a function which is real value, so it takes real numbers and outputs real numbers, yeah. And I tell you that the function converges to a constant, this does not necessarily imply that the derivative converges to 0, okay. So, a lot of us sort of think that, oh, if the function is converging to a constant, the derivative should converge to 0, okay. Uh, it is, while it is very true that if the function is constant for all time, then its derivative is 0 for all time, this is true no doubt about this. But here we are not talking about the function being constant for all time. All we are saying is the function is converging to a constant as t goes to infinity, yeah. Again, I hope these notations are clear. If not, please go ahead and revise, yeah, your uh, functions and continuity and limits and so on and so forth. We are not going to discuss those, okay. Uh, we are saying that in the limit, if the function converges to a constant, then the derivative does not necessarily converge to 0, okay. So, some very easy examples, um, okay. So, this is one example. So, if you look at this function sin of t square divided by t, okay. And if you take the limit as t goes to infinity, what happens to this function? The limit goes to 0, right. Yeah, everybody agree, agrees. 
because the numerator is just going to oscillate between minus 1 to plus 1 yeah and the denominator is basically going to go to infinity linearly right so therefore the ratio is definitely going to zero yeah this is and the other thing to remember is that this is a pretty nice smooth function everywhere except uh, you know at t equal to zero but since we are really talking about t going to infinity we don't really care so much about t what happens at t equal to zero we are talking about large time rather than you know small time so we are not that worried about its uh, not so nice behavior at the origin at at t equal to zero not origin at t equal to zero all right now let's look at the derivative all right very easy to compute right so i just use the whatever the if you want to use the product rule or the, yeah you can use the product rule or you can use the whatever the ratio rule yeah the derivative is just minus sin t square over t square when i take the derivative of 1 over t and then i have to take the derivative of this guy which gives me twice t cos t squared and so that cancels with the time right so i am just left with twice cosine t squared okay i hope you are convinced that this is in fact correct okay all right now what happens this guy still goes to zero right again numerator continues to oscillate but the denominator is actually going to infinity in fact much faster yeah but this term continues to oscillate right you don't know what it's doing at infinity yeah in fact this function uh, f dot of t does not have a limit as t goes to infinity okay this function does not have a limit as t goes to infinity i hope this is clear okay now can you give me another example i gave you one example can you give me one more it's very easy to construct with similar similar ideas i guess what do you think cos t square by t <laughs> making your life really easy there all right yeah cosine t square by t all right so you can construct similar ones yeah you can also construct different ones okay i mean it's not uh, too difficult okay it's not too difficult to do that okay um um let's see yeah 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 you can construct different ones also okay i'm not going to tell you what but yeah so you can take cos t squared by t as another example yeah, you can always do that yeah you can you can also do things like uh, sin t cube by t squared yeah so i mean so many different choices okay so there are so many functions i mean large swaths of functions which don't satisfy this kind of a mistake but i can promise you in a test i will definitely find one of you at least writing that because the function converges to constant the derivative converges to zero okay this happens all the time okay so be very careful i have that's a absolutely absolutely all of it yes all i'm saying is remember this is a myth yeah don't write in the test that my function converges to converge to a constant so my derivative is going to zero yeah that's wrong very wrong all right okay what about the converse that's not true either you yeah, the derivative of a function converges to zero the function doesn't converge to a constant either so the converse is also not true okay so all of this mess is created because of the limits yeah so the limit makes all of these go wrong yeah asymptotic because all i'm saying is asymptotically something happens to a function doesn't mean that asymptotically the same something similar nicely happens to the integral or the derivative okay so again an example very easy yeah this is a much easier example if i take the function as log t log natural of t then the derivative is what 1 over t what happens goes to zero yeah the derivative is going to zero yeah right if i take the limit of the derivative going to zero as t goes to infinity right it's just 1 over t right what happens to this guy as t goes to infinity blows up right really bad yeah blows up in fact yeah so sub linear growth it's a sub linear growth but it is still is going to go to infinity as t goes to infinity okay so really bad functions okay in that sense again another example can't use this one difficult now to continue this one because 1 over t square will not work will 1 over t square work 
1 over t square if f dot of t is 1 over t square then fine it goes to z uh, the derivative f dot of t is going to 0. What about the integral of 1 over t square also goes to 0 ok. It is a well known fact actually yeah I mean when you have a when the numer when the denominator has powers more than 1 strictly more than 1 then this is a convergent series. Yeah, I think those of you who have seen series, they would know that if I take a series 1 over n, yeah, then it is not necessarily convergent, but 1 over n squared it is, yeah. So, the similar idea actually comes through here also, okay. So, this sort of an example will not work. Something else? Motivated by the previous example maybe? From the previous like take this one, motivated by this can you construct something? And not the one that I crossed out, huh? this is wrong. <laughs> or any other counter example where the derivative converges to 0, but the function itself does not converge to a constant. T, t e minus t. So the function, if the function is going to 0, as t goes to 0 e raised to minus t will dominate t, right? you are saying, yeah, yeah, exponential will dominate the linear growth, so e to the power minus t will take you to 0. Square root of t, nice example, alright, square root of t, what happens? f of t square root of t, f dot of t is, did I get this right? Definitely did not get this, this is minus right, minus 1 over 2 i square root of t, the derivative right. So now, this guy is going to go to 0 as t goes to infinity right, but this is again blowing up, this is going to infinity yeah, as t goes to infinity, right, is okay, right, yeah, yeah, okay. So, anything with square root of t, sin of square root of t, this will also work, like you know, examples, alright. So, many examples, again, I mean, no dearth of examples here, yeah. So, please resist from ever saying anywhere that if functions converge to constant, the derivatives converge to 0, derivatives converge to 0, functions converge to constant and things like this, ok. So, be very wary because we do asymptotic analysis all the time and I can tell you this is a serious temptation. While you are writing things in the flow, you tend to write it, yeah ok, I am done, yeah, but that is not enough, ok. You have to prove those things, that it really happens, that the function converges to 0 and the derivative also converges. Uh, to 0 or something like that, you have to actually prove it, yeah, it requires something more, yeah, all right, all right. We, we will probably at some stage also talk about what is this something more, but not immediately, all right. So, now we go on to a little bit of uh, more pedantic material, yeah, I do not know how interesting you will find it, but anyway, I mean this is like I said, the purpose is to establish notation and we will establish it, right, all right. So, the first thing is uh, vector and matrix norms, right. So, we keep using norms all the time because this is more often than not we will be working with real vector space, right. So, everything is real numbers or Rn or Rk and Rp. So, we want to have a means of talking about distance, lengths of vectors and so on, yeah. So, how do I say that my state is 0? I can only say that in the norm sense, right. So, or, or if, if I, how do I say that uh, the state is getting closer to 0? I mean staying 0 is still easy if all the components are 0, but how do I say that my states are coming close to 0, yeah, has to be in a norm sense, yeah, so because this is the only way I can measure some distance, length and so on, ok. So, uh, we are always working with uh, what is an, a norm linear space, alright, so this is the idea, we will maybe talk a little bit more uh, detail on this, but for now remember that we are always working with a normed linear space, yeah. There are several notions connected to it, again we will look at this uh, in a little bit more detail, yeah. So, so this bit will be a little bit pedantic and mathematical. So, norm is basically a function which takes your uh, element in the vector space, in this case we are just saying Rn, 
yeah but it will norm is valid i mean you can generate a norm for any norm linear space or yeah, any norm vector space so if this function is a valid norm if it satisfies these properties okay very standard properties non negativity yeah and then you have the scalar multiplication property and triangle inequality okay so these are really the three properties and of course this is a key addendum in some sense right if the norm is zero the state or basically x has to be zero okay so there is no two ways about it all right so um, what are the typical commonly used norms for vectors it's the infinity norm and the p norm what is the infinity norm it is just the largest element of the vector largest absolute value of the vector elements okay so you take the absolute value take the max okay and what is the p norm the p norm is basically just take the absolute value to the power p and then take the summation and then take the pth root okay so the most common uh, one amongst these is the what is the euclidean distance right so if i have for example if i have uh, a vector in r4 like this right like this guy then what is the infinity norm it's 7 right because if i take the absolute value of all elements 7 is the largest one okay similarly what is the one norm it's just the you know the one norm is just basically you know it's just the sum of all the elements in this case right again because all the elements are positive right so the one norm is just the summation so that's 3 plus 2 plus 7 plus 5 that's this guy right and what's the two norm is this expression right take the squares basically take the squares of the absolute values take the summation and then take the pth root of this okay so this is the standard way of computing distance this is the euclidean distance we are used to computing distance with the two norm all this yeah uh, the other norms we don't uh, let's see no, i'll not go there first the other norms we don't use uh, like you know immediately uh, depends on those are very special purpose norms you don't always use them so uh, i will say that uh, it's uh, some of them are a little bit more mathematical constructs but they are all still very very useful okay so the l the one norm is of course a very very important norm all right now one of the questions i typically ask is so suppose i go here to get some space suppose i tell you that x is in r2 okay two dimensional vector okay so this is the notation x belongs to r2 okay i hope you are used to this notation all right so now i ask you uh, what does the set a1 which is basically norm of x infinity less than equal to 1 what does this set look like square okay all right so you were saying uh, i think you can draw some lines too okay. let's see okay so what you're saying it's a square centered at centered at origin okay all right So it's a square centered at origin, and how big is this square? Like one, one unit each. Okay. So I don't know if I made a square. All right. This is the square. Okay. So right, you're right. So this is basically a square of uh, basically this is a. Uh, 1 comma 0 this is minus 1 comma 0 and this is 0 comma 1 and this is 0 comma minus 1 okay 
why is this a square can anybody sort of understand i mean figure why this is a square why 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 distance of what so the infinity norm is what is the maximum in x and y all right okay then now what exactly exactly yeah so the, so basically uh, since the infinity norm is less than or equal to 1 it means each component in absolute value is allowed to be less than or equal to 1 right and so you can see that all of those are right here in this square okay you you basically uh, if you get out of this square you are guaranteed to violate this uh, condition okay as soon as you get out of the square you are guaranteed to violate this condition okay so that's the whole idea as simple as that okay great 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 okay good now what about a2 which is right this everybody knows very well right okay i can draw a circle have assistance all right so now i just have to make some centered lines here all right it is what it is and the radius is 1 all right so circle is basically the equation of the circle is x square plus y square less than equal to 1 in this case so the disk not the circle but the disk so and that's exactly what we are doing all right great what okay this was actually wrong this should have been called a infinity right what is a1 one norm less than equal to 1 it's two dimensional x is two dimensional it's a diamond yeah x is two dimensional yes it would be a line if it was one dimensional yeah so let's see let me try to make this one hmm? yeah why okay so basically you will get i uh, if you take the absolute value right so what you want is that the equation that you get here will be absolute value x1 plus absolute value x2 less than equal to 1 this breaks down to four lines right x1 plus x2 less than equal to 1 x1 minus x2 less than equal to 1 minus x1 plus x2 less than equal to 1 Minus x one minus x two less than equal to one. Okay, so therefore you will get the area as the intersection of these four. Right? So the line, the basically the end, the rhombus edges are the lines, the four straight lines, right? Like like this line is what is this line? Huh? X one plus x two equal to one. So if you say so, yeah, I guess so. Should be fine. This one should be x one minus x two equal to one, and so on and so forth. Yeah, it's just the intersection of these lines and whatever is contained inside them because you have a less than equal to one. Yeah, if it was greater than equal to one, then it would be everything outside. Okay, good. Clearly, you guys have seen all this before. Huh? All right. 